Welcome to Japan Issues. The identity of the real enemy that the U.S. is targeting after the overthrow of Putin's regime. The war is far from over. A lesson that Japan should learn. I would like tentatively to share the insights Yukihiro Hasegawa, a Japanese prominent journalist. The situation in Ukraine, the future of which is not clear. How will the war in Ukraine, which began with Russia's invasion, end? The future is uncertain, but debate is raging in the US and Europe over what the end of the war will look like. Unfortunately, I do not see an early end to the war. The main reason is that the US does not want it to end. How to end the war is inextricably linked to the goals of the war. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky told at a management seminar sponsored by the Wall Street Journal on May 3rd, the goal of the war is to stop Russia's advance to retake territory and ultimately to ensure the recovery of all territory through diplomatic negotiations. Zelensky also said, We want the Crimean Peninsula to remain part of Ukraine. The president is aiming to regain the eastern Donbass region, which is now controlled by Russian forces, as well as the Crimean Peninsula, which was taken by Russia in the 2014 invasion. What about the Russian side? If the war remains as it is, President Vladimir Putin will not accept the surrender of the Donbass as well as the Crimean Peninsula. If he accepts this, he will lose sight of what he started the war for. It would be a complete defeat, and even the survival of the Putin regime would be in doubt. The West is supplying Ukraine with cutting edge weapons one after another. While Russia is also rushing to control the eastern part of the country with all its might. In the end, there is no room for compromise on either side at the moment. And the fighting is likely to continue for some time to come. How will it end? Nevertheless, the reason why, how to end the war, is being discussed here is because specific statements have been made by the US and other countries regarding the goals of the war. Former US Secretary of State Henry Kissinger, speaking remotely at the World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland, on May 23, said, With about a third of the Crimean Peninsula and Donbass region in mind, we should return to the pre-war partition line. To ask for more than that would be a new war against Russia. Not Ukraine's freedom, he said. In response, Zelensky said in his customary video speech on May 25, Mr. Kissinger is in 1938, not 2022. It is as if he spoke in Munich, not Davos. He criticized Kissinger, citing then British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain's policy of appeasement that allowed Nazi Hitler, who invaded Czechoslovakia, to cede the Zadetan region. There are other voices calling for a solution to the problem through diplomatic negotiations rather than continued fighting. For example, Richard Haas, President of the Council on Foreign Relations, CFR, an influential voice in global diplomacy, noted in an editorial article on the CFR's website on May 10, as follows. The war should end with Ukraine controlling all of its territory. But that does not necessarily justify trying to liberate the Crimean Peninsula and all of the eastern Donbass region by military force. Some of these goals are better pursued through diplomacy and some sanctions lifting. Although carefully written, this is in essence an assertion that the problems of the Crimean Peninsula and the eastern Donbass should be solved through diplomacy. Behind this argument is the observation that the U.S. administration of Joe Biden may have steered the goal of the war away from defense of Ukraine to weakening Russia and ultimately overthrowing Putin's regime. The trigger was Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin's April 25 statement. At a press conference in Poland held alongside Secretary of State Antony Blinken, Austin said, We want to weaken Russia until it cannot do, again, what it did in invading Ukraine. If the U.S. goal is to weaken Russia, then it is better for the U.S. that the war continue until Russia is so exhausted from the fighting that it can never stand up again.
It would be even more expedient if the Putin regime itself collapses as a result. The real enemy that the U.S. is targeting. The United States has recently shifted its strategic objective to the overthrow of Putin's regime, because it is preparing for a full-scale confrontation with China. As you know, China has made no secret of its ambitions in the East and South China Seas, including Taiwan and Japan's Senkaku Islands. The U.S. believes that a full-scale confrontation with China is inevitable. If that is the case, it is perfectly reasonable for the U.S. to want to reduce as much as possible the power of Putin, who is a close ally of President Xi Jinping, while this war is still going on. In terms of the global balance of powers, the real enemy for the U.S. is China, and Putin's Russia is the enemy's friend. In effect, the war in Ukraine is now becoming a battle between the United States and Russia, with China in the background. Even though Ukraine is directly engaged in warfare with Russia, the U.S. has its sights set on China, which is in the background, and is looking at the war between Russia and Ukraine from that perspective. Ukraine cannot resist the U.S. This is because it is the U.S. that is now providing the all-important weapons. President Zelensky, who at first did not clearly state the goal of the war, has begun to talk about retaking Crimea, perhaps because he has sensed the intentions of the United States firsthand. That is how it appears to me. At the very least, The Ukrainian side is not in a position to propose ceasefire talks at this time. I think it is safe to assume that the war will continue until the Ukraine's recapture of Crimea comes into view. The US and Ukraine have their own agendas. The Biden administration has not officially acknowledged that overthrowing Putin's regime is a goal of the war. Despite the defense secretary's earlier statement, but articles by administration watchers ooze such observations. For example, Haas wrote in an earlier editorial, the United States should not use the war to undermine Russia. Rather, the U.S. should make it clear that it wants to end the war on terms that reflect Ukraine's sovereignty and independence as much as possible. This is precisely what he sees as the U.S. trying to use the war for its own purposes. Aside from the U.S. intentions, Ukraine itself does not seem to be willing to compromise at the moment. A Ukrainian poll showed that 82% of the population does not want to give up territory to Russia. Morale is high. The longer the war drags on, the greater the damage will be, of course, to Ukraine and its people themselves. In this sense, Ukraine can be said to be a double victim of Russian aggression and U.S. intentions. This is a painful story for Ukraine, but unfortunately, this is where we are now in the war in Ukraine. There is no guarantee that the same composition will not occur when China moves to seize Taiwan. It will be the Taiwanese military that fights China head on. With the U.S. just supporting in the background. This is even more true for Japan's Senkaku Islands. There is no way the U.S. will come out and fight to defend the Rocky Islands. Where not even of single Japanese lives. The war in Ukraine also reveals the cruel truth about small nations at the mercy of powerful nations' power politics. It is a lesson that Japan should learn. That's all for now. Thank you for your interest.